What is your name, please? My name is Joe Savoldi. What is your name, please? My name is Joe Savoldi. What is your name, please? My name is Joe Savoldi. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Joe Savoldi and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Welcome to To Tell the Truth. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. <laughs> my name is Keenan Wynn. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is Hi Gardner. <laughs> yes, yes. Keenan, I must say it was nice of you to decide to do a Paramount picture with Sophia Loren back here in the East, because when we learned you were here, we grabbed you. Well, I think it's wonderful, and I know Sophia will enjoy the plug, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a sincere welcome from all of us. Glad to Thank have you, you back. Now, these three gentlemen, as you heard, all claim to be Joe Savoldi. Only one, of course, is the real Joe Savoldi. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they are the ones who do not have to stick to the truth. As is our custom panel, you'll find copies of an affidavit in front of you. Can you please open them and have it before you while I read from the original? I, Joe Savoldi, am a graduate of the University of Notre Dame, where I played football under Knut Rockne and was twice voted All-American. After college, I became a professional wrestler and was recognized as world's champion. During World War II, as an American OSS agent with General Wild Bill Donovan, I participated in a mission which led to the surrender of the entire Italian fleet. Signed, Joe Savoldi. <laughs> now you heard these three gentlemen all claim to be Joe Savoldi, wrestling champion and intelligence agent. Only the real Joe Savoldi must answer your questions truthfully, of course. Each of you will question until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to cast your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Joe Savoli. And we'll begin tonight's questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Thank Kitty? you, Bud. Number one, where did you win the world champion wrestling? Madison Square Garden. Number two, it says here that you played football under Newt Rockney. Uh, do you know his wife's name? Mrs. Rockney. <laughs> <laughs> What was the mission that led to the surrender of the entire Italian fleet? The Gerosi mission. The Gerosi mission? Gerosi mission. Can you, in, can you enlarge on that? Well, we were told to uh, infiltrate the uh, enemy lines uh, so that we can lead the, uh, <coughs> our boys over to uh, uh, the Italian admiral. At that time, it was Admiral Gerosi, who was supposed to hand over the Italian fleet and surrender. I was in 1943. Number one. Hi, Gardner. Uh, number two, uh, what is Strangler Lewis's first name? Ed, I think. Uh-huh. Number three, who was the most famous promoter of professional wrestling? He used to walk around with spats and carry a cane and so uh, Jack forth. Jack Curley. Uh, do you know number two? No, I don't. Number one? I do. What's his name? Curley. Uh, number one, who was known uh, in the sports writers as Joe the Goniff? Joe DeGarnoff was a Broadway character. Uh -huh. Number two, uh, was the late Newt Rockne a redhead, uh, brown, or was he bald? I don't think he had hair. Would you, was, <laughs> what would you say, number three? He was bald. Uh, number three, what, was the, uh, what is the name of the former heavyweight champion of the world who was still uh, uh, wrestling professionally? Would you know number two? Jimmy Landis? Uh, number one, would you know? Uh, Primo Cadero. Uh -huh. Number one, uh, one more question. Uh, you fellas, you yeah, certainly do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I never trust Ty when he uses all those names because I never know which one of them are real and which aren't. <laughs> <laughs> it's so tricky. Number one, uh, when did Dan Chamberlain uh, hold the wrestling championship? Never heard of him. Number two, could you tell me? Never heard of him. Number three? Never heard of him. Um... <laughs> I can't work every week. <laughs> I never heard of him 
either. Me either. Number I know him personally. Did you? <laughs> Number two, uh, who were the four horsemen? Could you name them? Well, I think it was Crowley, Stool Dreyer, and uh, Layden. I think. Uh, Number one, Don how do you Miller. spell Stool Dreyer? <laughs> oh, come on, I got it in. S T U H R U H E R R E E R. Spells Crowley. E R E R. Uh, Keenan -E. Wynn. Yeah, I'm sorry, Still I am. Dry. <laughs> well, of course, most of the things that I was thinking of, Jack Curley, I knew, I knew Mr. Curley. And all, did you wrestle, number two, did you wrestle, ever wrestle in Yankee Stadium? Yes. Uh, what name did you use as a pro wrestler at that time? Jumping Joseph Oldie. Mm -hmm. That's odd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what was the name, number three, what was the name of the flagship of the Italian fleet? I wouldn't know. Number two? I don't remember. Number three? Number one? I wouldn't know. I don't either. That makes four. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't either. The time is all gone. It's time to cast your ballots, if you will, please, panel. And in so doing, of course, without consultation, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Remember that the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. All set, panel? Polly, are you ready? No. Get set. <laughs> and go. For whom did you vote? I vote for number two because I think his left ear is cauliflower. And I don't know whether you, <laughs> I don't know whether you get that when you wrestle, but I know you do when you prize fight. And maybe you do when you wrestle. So I voted for him, which means he's probably a prize fighter and not Joseph Oldie. Keenan, <laughs> <laughs> what about your selection? I voted for number two because he knew Newt Rockney's wife's name. <laughs> And your vote, Kitty. I voted for number one based on some of those probably phony questions from High <laughs> and the fact that number three stammered on uh, the, the mission. I didn't feel that infiltrating behind the lines had much to do with the fleet. Mm -hmm. And High Gardner? Well, I voted for number three. Uh, number two has the, the usual husky voice of a wrestler or a, a fighter, but, uh, and, and wrestlers are hard to identify when they're sitting down. But uh, uh, number three, I think, uh, when we came to Newt Rockney being boiled, he said it with such, uh, uh, so definitely that I went for three. Okay, there we have it. The votes are in, the minds are made up. Let's see how they compare with the way you've done in your voting at home. And I hope you are playing along with us there as we discover which one of these three gentlemen is the wrestling champion and erstwhile intelligence agent. So will the real Joe Savoldi please stand up? <laughs> Thank you, Joe, very much. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Dominic Pape. I'm a union official. I catch to the DRWWI U of A. Mr. Pape, would you mind translating all those initials for us, please? Distillery Rectifiers, Wine Workers, International Union of America. <laughs> that does it. Also, the way you spell stool dryer. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, what about you? Yeah. My name is Ben Vitali, and I am the Borough Secretary of Brooklyn. Ask Joe what he does now. Ask Joe what he does now. You yes. ask Joe what he does Joe, now. Joe, what do you do now? I'm in the insurance business in South Bend, Indiana. I represent the Federal Life Insurance Company of Chicago with the Arno Gilman Agency in the Oddfellows Building in South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 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 Joe, what do you do now? I mean, uh, as we check up on the score here, we find that there were two incorrect votes of $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. Gentlemen, you'll find a carton of Marlboros for each of you on the way out. Thanks for being with us. Good night and good luck. <laughs> what is your name, please? My name is Sandra LeBrock. What is your name, please? My name is Sandra LeBrock. What is your name, please? My name is Sandra LeBrock. 
All right, panel, you've had a look. You've heard what they claim. Follow along, if you will, please, in your copies of this affidavit. I, Sandra LeBrock, am a member of the internationally famous Bluebell Girls. An early highlight of my career was entertaining British troops during World War II. I traveled on the continent with a ballet company, and I've also danced in Paris at both the Bal Tabarin and the Lido de Paris nightclubs. Currently, I am appearing at the Stardust Hotel in Las Vegas with a French nightclub show which was imported direct from Paris. Signed, Sandra Lebrun. Now, panel, you heard these lovely young ladies all claim to be Sandra LeBrock, Paris showgirl. Let's begin this cross-examination with High Gardner. Hi. Uh, where did you first wrestle? Uh, oh, I'm <laughs> uh, number one, uh, where in Paris is the Lido located? On the Avenue Champs-Élysées. Uh, number two, in, in what part of uh, Paris will you find the Folies Brugères? Um, I, I really don't know. Would you know number three? That's in Montmartre. Uh, number three, what is the name of the publicity man at the Stardust? Our publicity man is, uh, Johnny Augustine. Uh, would you know number one? Uh, his name is Mr. Murphy. Uh-huh. Would you know number two? I think his name is Mr. Murphy. Uh-huh. Number two, in, in what Las Vegas newspaper do you read the columns of, of Winchell, Gardner, and a number of other people? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know. Would you know number one? Uh, I've read them, but I can't quite remember. Would you know number three? I can't recall either. Uh -huh. Uh, number one, who? Polly? Number one, if you're standing in front of the Stardust Hotel, what is the hotel to your left directly across the street? Uh, to my left? That's right. Let's see, now the desert inn is, uh, on that side. Number two, could you tell me? It, it's the desert inn. To the left, if you're standing in front of the... Stardust would be over there. Number three, could you tell me? It's opposite the desert inn. <laughs> None of them have ever been in Las Vegas. <laughs> ever. <laughs> the riders came from there, and they're all wrong. Um, Maybe you're more observant than they are. That's possible. <laughs> Number one, what is the color of the dining room at the Stardust? Oh, it's pink. The walls are very beautiful. Pink Number two, color. where is the orchestra located in the dining room? Um, it's on the left-hand side of the stage. Keenan? Yeah, number two, what is the name of the organization that handled entertainment, the British organization that would be equal to our USO? What was the name of it? And entertainment for the troops during the war. I really don't know. Number three? I don't know either. We was not for a certain organization. Number one? Ensa. Number one, uh, how old were you at the time that you entertained the troops? <laughs> well, I was, uh, at the time, attending a dancing school, a small one, during the war, and I was about ten years old. I see. Whereabouts did you entertain the British troops? Um, in Wales. In Wales. Kitty? Number one, what were the Tiller girls? The Tiller girls? They were a group of dancers. Number two, uh, is Sandra LeBrock your real name, or is it a stage name? Uh, it's my real name. Number three, uh, where do you live in Paris? In Paris, we stayed just off the Champs Elysees, about five minutes' walk from what there. Street? In a hotel. It was on a, on a square. You don't know the name uh, of it? It was Place Diena. Well, number one, uh, what arrondissement was it? Um, sort of straight ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, come see, come saw. And here we go for a vote because our time is up for any further questions. So without consultation, once again, panel, will you mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three? Oh, Polly, you're firm and first, huh? Who did you vote? <laughs> I voted for me because I'm the only oh, one. Oh, no, 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 Well, <laughs> well uh, then I, I'll just pick from them standing up there because none of them, them knew anything. Up there. <laughs> what number? number two. Number two. All right, Keenan, who is your vote for? I picked number one because she knew what Anza was and she also thought she knew what you said. 
No, I didn't. Jane, for whom was your vote? I voted for number one, although she didn't know what I said. An arrondissement is a zone. Of course it is. And, uh, but she's the right color from having come from Las Vegas. And also, she knew about Enza. All right, and your vote now, hi. Well, I voted for number one because she knew the name of the press agent for the Stardust, Murphy, Jean Murphy. Okay, there we have it. Now let's see how well we made out. Did we discover which one of these three equally lovely ladies I is the real I'm Paris showgirl, dancer, etc., etc. So will the real Sandra LeBrock please stand up? <laughs> 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 and you weren't going to vote, eh? <laughs> Thank you very much, Sandra. Very sorry, sorry, no. very sorry, but I thought you were facing the stardust when no, you were standing in front of it. In that case, it's the Well, when she stood in front of it, she faced it, you see. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Pamela Reiner. I'm a housewife and mother of three children. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, number three, what about you? My name is Angela Welsh, and I'm an airline stewardess with Pan American Airways. Oh. <laughs> if I look a little startled, a cat just ran across the stage. <laughs> Ladies, checking up on the arrondissement, we find that there were three incorrect votes at $250 each for a rather bewildering $750 from Marlboro, which you may take and divide as well as a cat, if you will. <laughs> on your way out, you'll find three cartons of Marlboros waiting for you. Good night and good luck to all of you. <laughs> All right. Now, while we're feeding the kitty, let's take time out for a minute. <laughs> All right, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Ido Ramanoli. What is your name, please? My name is Ido Romanoli. What is your name, please? My name is Ido Romanoli. Once more, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this final affidavit? I, Ido Romanoli, am a New York City policeman. I am also a distance runner. In the past few years, I have won a number of marathon championships. Last week, I ran in the longest race of my career, 157 miles. There were seven runners competing in the race. Three of them were men, and the other four were horses. Signed, Ido Romanoli. <laughs> all right, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Ido Romanoli, as you heard. Marathon runner, policeman. We start this round with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Number one, um, who won? You were the horse. <laughs> well, let's see. When I stopped after 118 miles, uh, I was ahead of two horses who had quit completely. Two men were far out distance. I was ahead of uh, 15 miles ahead of the third horse, and I was about two miles behind the horse that eventually won. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, do, 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 it said that you ran uh, uh, 157 miles. Do you get to stop at all during that time? Well, yes, I stopped three times, actually. They allow you then no, to have a slight rest. No, rest at any time in between. Oh, I see. Uh, number three, where was the race located? In uh, Salt Lake City. That's where it started. In Salt Lake City. Where did it terminate? In uh, Roosevelt, Utah. Keenan? Number one. Do the horses have to assume a kneeling starting position? <laughs> uh, everybody took off from a stand and stop. <laughs> the answer is nay, nay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you bet on horses? Uh, I bet on myself this time. <laughs> well, uh, who is the present police commissioner? 
Uh, Mr. Stephen Kennedy. Uh, how long is a marathon, number two? Well, actually, a marathon is 26 miles, 385 yards. That's the official uh, distance. Number three, what's your badge number? 1427. What precinct? Kitty? Number one, what is a billy? Oh, that's a little uh, wooden stick to the policeman. Number can. two, do policemen at this point carry billies? At what point is that? Well, right now. <laughs> No. Yeah, we do carry. You um, do carry bills. Yeah. Uh -huh. Number three, in this race with the horses, were you the favorite? No, I was the dark horse. <laughs> Number one, were the horses being led, or were they ridden, or how did they get 118 miles by well, themselves? Uh, the horses had a rider, oh. and, and uh, they had like trailers in front of them that uh, they could stop whenever they wanted. Them. No. Hi, Gardner. Uh, number three, who was flying Bob McAllister? Oh, he was a. Um, former police inspector who was a uh, very outstanding athlete, and, uh, uh -huh. track man. Number one, did you know uh, who uh, McAllister was? He was before my time. Number two? Well, he was before my time. Uh, number two, what is your badge number? 3745. What precinct? 66. Where is that? That's in Brooklyn. Uh, number one, uh, what is the name of the form that a policeman must fill out immediately uh, after an accident or the scene of a crime? Is that the name that's given to it? I think it's a UF6. Uh, what number is it, number three? You have six. Uh -huh. Number two, uh, is it true that a New York cop has to pay for his own bullets? Certainly. How much, uh... That's it. Time once again to vote. So will you please mark your ballots for a selection of number one, number two, or number three. Have you marked your ballots, panel? Uh, anchor lady, have you marked your ballot? Oh, well. Or who did you vote? I should stick with my hunches tonight, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to vote for number two. I, I think it's number three, but... Uh, no, I really do, actually. But I voted for number two because he is the smallest, and if you have to run that far, you can't be too big after it's over, can you? <laughs> we didn't say anything about malnutrition during the well, day. That's a long run. Yeah, it is a long run. How you can't be, you know. Well, Keenan, what about your selection? I went for number one, because he looks very athletic to me, and he made a lot of sense when he talked about the length of the race. He explained it very accurately. Huh? Kitty, your selection? I voted for number one. Also on the basis of his uh, physiognomy and because he gave the complicated setup of the race a very good shake, I thought, as Keenan did. And I voted for number selection. one too, Bud, because I liked his answers, particularly the form. And furthermore, uh, he was a diplomat. He called the commissioner, Mister. <laughs> 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 All right, there we have it. Now let's see how close we've come to the truth, as we discover which one of these three stalwart gentlemen is the real marathon runner, whether he shrank or not. <laughs> so will the real. Ido Romanoli, please stand up. Oh, <laughs> well, Pat, you did real well on that one. You did real, real well. Now, number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? Well, my name is Louis Randizzi. I'm the foreman of Mel's uh, United States Post Office. And number three, what about you, sir? I'm Ralph Damian. I'm superintendent of, of the Rye Recreation Commission in Rye, New York. Well, there it is. We find that the panel did real well with you gentlemen, meaning there was only one incorrect vote at $250 for that total from Marlboro. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Hope you had fun. We did. On your way out, you'll find that there is a carton of Marlboros for each of you. Thanks a lot again, and good night. I guess that's it, panel. Except once again, Keenan, thanks very much for being with us tonight. Well, thank you very much, bud. You're always most welcome, as you know. Thank you. Good luck with the picture. Next week, Tom Ewell will be back. And I guess that's about all the little social bits of chit-chat I can think of. So good night, panel. Good night. Good night, bud. Now, this is Bud Collier saying good night from Marlboro and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is... Mark Goodson, Bill Cotton production, in association with the CBS Television Network.
Miss Bergen Town by Wilma.